Farming in Terraria is never going to be quite the same again, and today I'm going to tell you why. Greetings friends, Chaos here. The Shimmer has added a lot of interesting new items to this wonderful game and some of them will directly impact how we farm from here on out. Today I'm going to be looking at new ways that we can use Shimmer Wall Transmutation to help us improve our farms. Before I get into that, I just wanted to quickly remind you that we still have plushies on sale. These Jumbo plushies help support the channel in a big way and you get a fun bit of merch out of it. Thank you to everybody who has already placed their order. Now, there could be a whole slew of farming applications for the Shimmer that I haven't thought of yet, so if you think of something new, be sure to let me know in the comments. Today, however, I'm going to be specifically looking at the new unsafe walls. Visit your nearest Shimmer pool. Tossing in certain walls gives you that wall back, except it's unsafe. This is essentially a placeable version of the natural walls that generate in the game. That is to say that enemies will spawn in front of them, and they also have their special wall properties. More on that in a bit. Let's start off by throwing some sandstone wall and some hardened sand wall into the shimmer. These will transmute into treacherous sandstone and hardened sand wall. They are the exact same as the versions you will find in the underground desert. When below the surface and standing in front of this wall, underground desert enemies will spawn. You don't even need to actually be in a desert biome for this one. You just need the walls. So if you take these treacherous walls to your basic volcano style farm and place them in your AFK location, you will have a way of farming most of the desert enemies with ease. There is something to keep in mind when working with these unsafe walls. Since they work exactly as they do when they are naturally generated, that means that you can only break them with the hammer starting on the outer edges of it. You won't be able to hammer right away in the center of a wall segment. This also means that you won't get any walls back when you destroy them, just like it is when you break the naturally spawning versions. So keep in mind that you won't be getting back what you play down. Perhaps farming underground desert enemies isn't something that you are particularly interested in. Well, that's not the only unsafe wall the Shimmer provides us. If you toss spider wall in, you will get back infested spider wall. As expected, this works just like the natural version that you find in spider caves. Unlike the desert background walls, however, wall creepers and black recluse will only spawn in front of the infested walls, and it doesn't matter if your player is standing in front of the wall or not. So if you wanted to farm them, you would need to place a few lines of the walls slightly off camera from your AFK point within the farm. And while there isn't much use to farming spiders in pre-hard mode, aside from some fried eggs, you can build a hard mode farm in advance before defeating the wall of flesh and have a very easy way to farm all of that sweet black recluse gear as soon as you enter hard mode. This can also help with finding the stylist as you only need some cobwebs at a workbench in a graveyard biome to create the spider walls in the first place and you don't necessarily need to find a large spider cave to help locate her now. Plus an added bonus for the infested spider wall is that it also produces cobwebs. If you need an abundance of the webs for, let's say, the Rebel Maker, or for any other purpose, then it could be extremely easy to build a farm with this. Just create a rectangular box filled with infested spider web wall. Beneath that, have a four block tall tunnel filled with whatever safe walls that you would like to prevent things like worms from spawning, and lay a line of minecart tracks. At one end of the box, put a row of dart traps and hook it up to a pressure plate track down below. Hammer the ends of the tracks to the bouncy version and get on your minecart. 
you can now bounce back and forth completely AFK as long as you desire. The cobwebs will grow over time, the dart traps will break them, causing the cobwebs to fall over your head where you will collect them safely. The more infested walls you have, the more webs you will get. Next up are lizard brick walls. These are the walls you find within the jungle temple and they allow lizard and flying snakes to spawn. Technically speaking, this is the last form of dangerous wall that we can transmute. So I'm kind of breaking the progression order slightly by talking about them now. However, the next wall is far better in my opinion. When you toss lizard brick wall into the shimmer, you get forbidden lizard brick wall back. A total of 250 lizard bricks will be required for the enemies to spawn, and they will only spawn when you are standing in front of the forbidden lizard brick wall, which they will also only spawn in front of. The interesting thing about the artificial lizard temple, however, is the fact that you don't actually need to be underground to make it. You could put this right on the surface and it's still going to do its thing. Another thing to note, when you break these walls with a hammer, you're going to get the safe version of the lizard brick wall back, since that's what happens normally when you break these walls. I wanted to save the best for last, so let's take a look at the dangerous dungeon wall types. In total, there are 9 walls that you can toss into the shimmer to get unsafe versions of. The unsafe dungeon walls keep their name except they add cursed at the beginning. There are 3 colors of walls which don't really make a difference here, but there are 3 types of walls that do make a difference. Brick walls are the base background of any dungeon, while the tiled and slab walls will occasionally spawn unique enemies from each wall type. I don't need to tell you why farming in the dungeon is great, given that it has a ton of drops, from things like golden keys all the way to ectoplasm and everything in between. The fantastic part of these unsafe walls is that you don't need to be anywhere near the actual dungeon to build the farm. And even better, you can build the entire farm safe from dungeon enemies by placing the dungeon brick that is required last. No more having to build a farm while paladins chuck hammers at your face. While we don't have to build the farm near the dungeon, there are a few requirements. You have to be underground to create an artificial dungeon. You cannot do this on the surface. In addition to that, you will need at least 250 dungeon bricks nearby. And on top of that, dungeon enemies will only spawn on top of dungeon bricks with cursed dungeon walls behind them. Your character is also required to be standing in front of the cursed dungeon walls for them to spawn, though you don't necessarily have to be standing on top of dungeon brick. After you clear out an area so enemies can only spawn within your farm, I recommend that you start by placing the walls first. Dungeon enemies will not spawn until there are those 250 bricks in place, so you could also place the bricks along the sides of the farm, saving the last handful of them for your AFK area. You could also easily turn this farm off by breaking a handful of dungeon bricks when you no longer want the enemies from there. In addition to all of that, this artificial dungeon biome does count for fishing, so you can easily make a perfectly safe fishing spot for all of your dungeon crate needs. You don't even need to fill the entire fishing pond with the cursed dungeon walls, just the area that your character is going to be standing in, as long as you have 250 dungeon bricks nearby. I just have one warning for when it comes to building an artificial dungeon. Be sure you kill Skeletron first. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. We recently passed 300,000 subscribers and we are going to try and push for 400k by the end of the year and so we're currently on track for that. It would be fantastic if you helped us reach that next milestone. Also, don't forget that we still have some plushies on sale, linked in the description below. A huge thank you to my biggest supporters for the month. Matt Dragon, Nate Wiley, Hypic3, and Duke Samron. And be sure to check out my channel artist Mythical Water, linked in the description below. 
Thank you all very much for watching. Be back soon with a new video. Until then, happy building.